and welcome to today's program and the topic for discussion is on microprocessors. I will not talk about any specific microprocessor but definitely there will be some example from uh, P6 microprocessors. But before we come to this P6 microprocessor let me talk about some generic uh, things uh, about the um, architecture, uh, about the basic issues of the microprocessors. But before we start, in fact, let me just talk about what exactly is the microprocessor. So first me, let me give the definition of a microprocessor. What is a microprocessor? Uh, by name itself, it means that it is a small processor on a chip. So one definition of a microprocessor could be that it is a small processor, a small processor on a chip, on a single chip, on a single chip. So this is one small definition, so one can remember always that what is a microprocessor is basically a small microprocessor or small processor on a chip. The second that is more appropriate definition of a microprocessor is that it is a single IC, a single integrated circuit that contains an LU and as well as the control unit. So basically we are talking about integrated circuits uh, which contains, which contains the two important components one is ALU, arithmetic and logical units and control units. So this is basically what you have in any processor, ALU where we do all the arithmetic and logic operations and there is a control unit for it. So basically what we are talking about is that when we talk of microprocessor, we mean integrated circuits which combines both the component on a single chip. So now the question is, so this is what we have now uh, cover the what is microprocessor. Let me answer some other basic question is that you take any processors, you will find all the components. So whatever we are talking about, so basically question is that since microprocessor have ALU, you have a control unit, you have I.O. ports, you have registers, you have a memory, you have a bus. So how does it differ from the, uh, from the uh, general processors now? So again, let me question, just re, uh, the basically, uh, let me um, raise the questions once again. Microprocessor have all the component as any processor. For example, they have I.O. ports, they have ALU, they have a control unit, they have a bus systems, they have registers and so on. Then what is the difference between a microprocessor and a normal processor which you come across, which you see in different types of configurations of a machine. So basically, the two issues which make a difference between a microprocessor and processor. In fact, the architect of a microprocessor must be concerned with three basic things. One is the size of size of integrated circuit die, the size which it takes where we'll, where we'll put all the components, ALU and all. The second will be the energy which consumes, so what we'll call them, the circuit power dissipations. So here is the difference. So a architect of a microprocessor must be aware of these things, although all the components are common between a microprocessor and a processor. One is size of IC die, the second is the circuit power dissipations. dissipations. The third is the total number of I.O. pins. You know that any microprocessor you take, any chip you of microprocessor you take, they have set of inputs and these inputs are for the, in, uh, for the, they work as a I.O., they work as a control, they work as a power, they work as a data bus, they have a control bus and so on. So the size of IC die, circuit power dissipation and third is the I.O. Uh, total number of pins, what we sometimes call packaging. So total number of pins for all those uh, issues on the integrated circuits. This is what a, the architect, apart from basic things like how to design a port, how to design a bus, how to design this one which is common between the processor and this one, one should be aware of these basic issues. Basically, one is concerned with the IC design and manufacturing construct. That is something uh, specific to a microprocessor which might not be there when someone designs a processor. So this is what the second questions we have answered that although components are common between the two, but what is the basic difference one has to 
um, address when one is involved with designing of a microprocessor. Now, so what exactly if someone designs a microprocessor or someone designs a processor? So basically, right now, we are not very much concerned with the manufacturing constraints and IC design constraints. We are more concerned with the design part of it and see the configuration of some of the microprocessors. We not go at the electronics level or the, uh, or the electrical aspects of the microprocessors. Uh, in fact, these all are the first and second more are concerned with the uh, manufacturing aspects of it, more concerned with the design part of it. So the issues remain the same, uh, what we do, what we address at the processors level or what we address at the microprocessors level. So uh, whether you design a processor or whether you design a microprocessor, you should be concerned with the so design aspects of it. So let us say me talk about design uh, consideration. What exactly we have to consider about the design part? That is important part. The third aspects which we are trying to address now, if someone wants to design a microprocessor, what one should be concerned? Of course, this is also common with, with uh, normal processors design also. Now basically what we are concerned here is the, this is important now. One a architect, a microprocessor architect or microprocessor designer has to be very basically do proper trade-off that what has to be put into the hardware and what has to be put into the software side. Um, because accordingly the system has to be optimized. If you are putting something uh, to the hardware side, then hardware has to be optimized for that purpose. If you are something designing for the software, software issues has to be addressed properly now. So one has to do, do balancing what will go into the design of the uh, uh, microprocessor in terms of the software, what it will go into the hardware part. So one has to distribute it properly so that the, the optimization should take place and the efficiency of a microprocessor should be uh, maximum. Now, uh, the, when you design a processor or a microprocessor, the important consideration is the instruction set. So when we consider the uh, design part, the important aspects which we are discussing right now is the instruction set. So now what exactly the instruction set, so one has to design the instruction set properly. An instruction set has com many components. Uh, what exactly is the uh, data types you have, one has to deal with easy. What data type system has to support, your microprocessor support with the integer or a float or the real um, character. Again, there are different version of the integer and so on, Unicode for example. So there are different uh, data types one can support. So one has to decide depending upon what type of situation one has to address now. Uh, whether it is a real time microprocessor where application, where microprocessor is be designed for a specific purpose and so on. So accordingly the data types has to decide. Accordingly you have to define the structure. Like for example, you have a most of the programming language, we have a array type of a structure, union type of a structure, you have a um, uh, bit field for example in C language and so on. So depends upon what type of uh, uh, languages you want to support or what type of system is you want to run on a microprocessor or whether where you want to use this microprocessor, you have to design the data types as structure. Same issues which we address when we design a particular programming languages now. What type of operators you want to suggest? Operators you have. By C language, we have different type of operators. We have, we say sometimes bitwise operator, we have a logical operator and so on. So accordingly, one has to optimize the design of the hardware part of it. One has to design at this the issue of controller structure. One has to, the another important part is what we call them, the task synchronizations, task synchronizations and process handling. You see basically uh, process handling. This is a very important component of the designing of the software part of it, uh, which basically, uh, we, you know that sometimes we 
many tasks might be running, how they have to synchronize it, or when you switch from one task to another task where the uh, status uh, of the return address has to be stored, that might be stored into some registers, might be somewhere in the stack or some other locations. Um, if we are addressing the real time problem, it has to be uh, issues, I mean the retrieval of the status has to be done very, very fast and so on. So basically, this is what the issue one has to address. I am just handling, just li in listing only few important component in the design consideration. Something might be, something more might be required to do. Another is the protections. How protect one data from another data? How system will able to, um, in case some error takes place while doing some operations, uh, let's say, for example, the underflow or the overflow. In this case, what's how the system will be able to hand, handle? Whether it has to be uh, there will be a normal interrupt or there will be normal interrupt and so on. So accordingly, some system, some some support has to be there. So the the last I'm just writing what we'll call them exception handling. So all the issues have to be handled while designing the microprocessor software. Uh, this is basically from software part of it. Something can go into the hardware part of it. Something can be left uh, as a software aspects of it through the functions or the utility and so on. So now once we have considered, so basically when you design a microprocessor, you deal with two basic issues. One is the software part of it. This is what we discussed. Here we have to decide what type of support microprocessor has to give to the uh, software running on the top of it or the applications where it is uh, for which it has been designed and the second is the technological consideration that is important but right now our main focus is more on this side. So what we have says, so what goes into the technological consideration? I already answered these questions when I talked about that the architect of a microprocessor um, and the architect of a processor has to handle a similar jobs. But architect of a microprocessor has to do little bit more, they have to understand the IC design and the manufacturing constant. So what it comes, what exactly comes into this, uh, what are basic challenges into as a part of technological consideration one has to address. Uh, one is a little the size of a die, the second is what we call them the power dissipations, dissipations and the third is what we call them the package, means number of pins they require it. So this is basically um, sometimes called package leads. So this is basically one is uh, it's more on the electronic and electrical issues, uh, but one a microprocessor designer has to understand these basic things also. And depending upon uh, type of microprocessor you have, the different categories of microprocessor. Some microprocessor you can see in your home appliances like washing machines and so on. So the different category of microprocessor according to the complexity of a microprocessor in terms of design changes. I have just list few category and you as an exercise can try to find out that if certain you see certain appliances at your home, you can see what type of microprocessor will be sitting inside these basic machines. So let me say, see uh, the topic right now which we are discussing right Right now, uh, let me summarize very quickly what we have discussed. We have given you a small definition of a microprocessors. We gave you what are the um, technological challenges, what are the design considerations one has to do, uh, what is basically uh, difference between design of a microprocessor and design of a normal processor, although many things are common between them. So let me just move now to the uh, new uh, topic. It's called categories of microprocessors. Now we have, so the topic right now is, there are different categories of microprocessor depending upon the complexity and the application for which they have been designed. Configuration of microprocessor in short form, I'm just writing UP. One is what we we'll call them the type of microprocessor which is used in calculator or sometimes of games and toys and so on. This is one type of category. It's just the first category is a type of microprocessor which is used in a simple calculator, add multiplications and something like this or they might be using into the game 
or some game or some toy and so on. So this is basically this type of uh, uh, microprocessor which is usually simple microprocessor which support more than not more than four or uh, maximum eight functions and so on. So this is one type of microprocessor where which is used in calculator or games and toy very simple type of um, microprocessors. The one way you can benchmark the microprocessor it means size of its bandwidth we say 4 bit microprocessor we say 8 bit microprocessor we say 16 bit microprocessor 32 bit microprocessor 64 bit microprocessor and so on. Higher the bandwidth more complex the microprocessor is its complexity in terms of design is much more higher than is normal 4, uh, 4 bit and, and higher the microprocessor they will do more functionalities. So then the second is called single chip calculator single chip calculator this is uh, this is another type of microprocessor much more higher than the, this one they are basically this functionality they can be used for the simple complex games complex games some peripheral controller peripheral controller so this type of is much more complex than the simple one um, this single chip calculator this type of microprocessor is basically used for very complex game, multi-party games. Many people might participate. Uh, peripherals and controllers they can be used. The third type of microprocessor is called mid-range standards. It's not very very standard. Uh, the, I mean, the category which I have listed is not such a standard. But anyway, one can understand. Uh, by this category, the type of microprocessors are in the market today. This fourth is called high performance microprocessors. The fifth is called the highest one is called bit slice. And the mid uh, the mid range standards mid range is basically used. They are used for programmable ca uh, calculator. Most of these are uh, uh, we have programmable. Um, you can say controller some instruments, musical instruments, again you have a terminals, they all are basically used, they are high performance used for very complex terminals, um, graphics terminals you can see in the come into this in category, uh, then we have a bit slice unit, some disk contro controller, high speed peripherals devices. So these are the various categories which we have. Um, the single chip calculator again going back can be used for the home appliances also. So most of these home appliances we have are now microprocessor based and the processor type is microprocessor type is a single chip um, calculator. So these are the uh, these are the basic category in which most of the microprocessors can be put into this one now. Once let us try to see now what are now I will talk about the what are basic advancement in microprocessors we have taken few questions and try to answer them so that you have a basic understanding about the microprocessors I think the uh, uh, the two basic I will just refer to the question which I trying to address now is the uh, what are basic advancement what are basic design trends in today's microprocessors microprocessors from 8084 or 8088 or it has been since those days lots of changes have taken place we will try to uh, identify few design trends and try to explain some basic concepts of it uh, the two innovations has uh, sparked uh, the whole computers revolutions and uh, microprocessor is is one such uh, such thing the uh, one is the basically I will tell you uh, basic advancement we are trying to find out where the design trends are there but before come to finally note down what are those those let's try to understand the revolutions which had taken place and what are basic reason for revolution in 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 computers design or the microprocessor design one is what we we'll call them the known as a von neumann machine and it's also called a stored program concept a stored program concept you see sometimes it's called where both these what we'll call them uh, we is, is as uh, also known by the von Neumann machines where the data as well as the program are stored at the same place is much more flexible than the machine which we had earlier and this is known by the stored program concept it's where both the data and the program reside at the same place now uh, 
The second one is called the design of invention of transistors. Sometimes they call silicon switches now. Earlier we have the vacuum tube. So this, so because of this stored, because of these transistors, the machine size is becoming a smaller and a smaller uh, transistors. Uh, this silicon, uh, mm, uh, you know that basically now there are millions of millions of transistors are sitting in those uh, microprocessors now. That is why they are becoming much more powerful today than the old machines which we have uh, in the mainframe categories now. The third trend which we see here in the that every every 18 months we have the the design or the bandwidth of this microprocessor is getting doubled. Um, earlier we have a 4 bit with 8 bit with 16 bit 32 bit now we are moving to 64 bit microprocessors. So this way and plus lots of new the size of memory changing size of bus bandwidth is also changing. Um, the processor complexity is increasing. So this is so every every 18 months we find that the new technology is coming in terms of the new bandwidth and so on of a processors or memory so on. But the most let come to the answer question direct um, answer to this question that what are basic design trends of course these are the basic reasons for which all these new changes are taking place now stored program concepts or transistors and so on. But a new direction from what we are here today to discuss is that the, the these are the new design trends I will call them. Uh, um, here just I will write down new design trends which are you will find in almost all these processors today, microprocessors. One I will call them the pipelining. I will try to explain few concepts. The pipelining, what exactly the pipelining I will try to explain. There is called, we have a super scalar processor. Pipelining does not improve, I mean does not expedite a particular computations. But, but it tries to overall, but try to improve the overall uh, output of a program or output of a throughput of your machines. We will give you one small example. Uh, we will design the pipeline for the arithmetic pipelining. One can design a instructions pipelining. So, um, pipelining in fact does not Im uh, uh, expedite the uh, operation of a particular um, uh, uh, not expedite the operation, particular operation, but overall throughput in it increases now. So we have a pipelining concepts, the super scalar processors which we have. We have parallelism is taking place. Means many instructions are being executed. Many operations are taking place simultaneously by having multiple functional unit. Earlier we have one ALU or one multiplier or one adder or one subtractor. There might be many uh, such complexity because of miniaturizations, many such functional units can be supported into the systems. So this is called parallelism and so on. We say the another is called VLIW, very large instructions word, this is another this one and so on. So there are many trends in which the whole microprocessor are basically uh, mm, now moving now. Uh, if you look at this basic this one now, um, let me just identify uh, where is I told you in the beginning that I will take one processor called micro P6 and you see where what are the trend into the P6 microprocessors. So P6 so the design trends in the uh, in P6 if I take so what are the new things into P6 and I will concentrate on I will try to design the P6 architecture partially and explain what exactly is happening. So basically uh, the uh, the P6 microprocessor has this basic feature called three-way, three-way, what we we'll call them three-way issue super scalar architecture. Super scalar architecture. The most of the processor earlier microprocessor was a scalar uh, type of architecture. They, they used to issue only one instruction at a time. So in one clock cycle, they used to issue only one instructions. But here when we talk of the super scalar architecture, the, it means that they issue more than one instruction. So we say three way, ideally should be a three instructions, four way, five way and so on. 
So it means that three, four instructions can be issued in same clock cycle. It means that its throughput is twice than the normal scalar processors. Then we have a the the 14 stage super pipeline. 14 stage super pipeline. The higher the stage, the more the stage you have, again the overall throughput of the system gets improved because each states each stage works on this particular type of data for a stage uh, super pipelining. I will explain this word after listing this one. Come to the third is called five parallel executions unit. So various ways I can try to improve the operations. One of the system of a microprocessor of a machine, one way by pipelining, second way by called vector processing means basically you know that one of the classifications of a fin single instruction, single data, single instructions, multiple data and most of these own numens are come into single instruction, single data. But there is a machine called CMD, most of the um, supercomputers come into the CMD category. They, uh, they, see, they all, they have multiple functional units and they all work on, on different data, same instructions same operation, but they all are working on a different sets of data. So you require multiple ALU. Now, now, uh, so this way I can improve the operations. So let me just repeat once again the questions which I am trying to answer right now is the various ways the, uh, you can improve the performance of a system. The basic generic notions we have is that means that if uh, you have more processors, then only you can uh, speed up the operation. That is the ideal side. That will be say parallelism. But we can speed up the operation of a system by having the pipelining concept, several stages of the pipelining we can have. We can add more functional units into it. We can uh, by, so uh, means many can work on a similar data uh, simultaneously, so on. So the, uh, so 14 stage super pipelining, five parallel executions unit, five parallel executions unit and so on. Uh, we have a again the memory size is they call it uh, they call it uh, later on 8 kb 8 kb 2 associative various way i can organize my cache the four way associative two way set associative so 8 kb two way set associative these are the features you will find most of the microprocessors they have set associative uh, primary uh, primary instructions cache they work with the CPU, primary instructions cache. We have 8 KB, 4 way, 8 KB, 4 way associative uh, secondary memory. Um, sorry, this is also, uh, means 2 8 KB, we have a uh, 2 8 KB. In fact, some of the design trends you can see now, the rather than the, uh, rather than uh, the a increase uh, the, um, units, I mean functional units or increase the size, they organize it in different way. So, you will find that the 4, 8 KB two way associative primary uh, instruction cache, then we have 8 KB four way set associative primary data case and something. So, th so the instruction cache is again 8 KB, the data cache is another this one now. Then we have out of order uh, executions, dynamic branch predictions and a speculative executions. We have most of these P6 machines are 32 bit machines means the word length which they can handle at a time is called 32 bit. So let me just before uh, go back to let me explain how it really works here is uh, before come back to coming back to the P6. Uh, configuration. Let me briefly just talk about some of the basic fundamentals which we have, what we call them the pipelining. So I listed in the beginning some of the design, like for example here also it is pipelining concept is. The super scalar architecture which already explained to you, the most of the microprocessors today issue more than one instruction in one cycle. Earlier microprocessor they called scalar microprocessor or a scalar uh, they used to issue only one instruction. So, uh, still if I have a three way um, super scalar, this means that three times more than that uh, I sense. So, let me just talk about what exactly the pipelining concepts I have. I told you in the beginning the pipelining and the vector processing are the two basic methods to improve the performance of a systems. Here what we are trying to do is we do not improve or speed up individual computations, but rather perform 
several computational simultaneously uh, in order to generate more results in time. The pipelining concept is very similar to what you can see in the assembly line or see the conveyor belt on the, uh, the airport itself. Uh, so, uh, and two pipelines are basically supported in most of the system, one called instructions pipelining. So, basically they improve the fetching, decoding, loading of the instructions very, very fast, the speed of this operation. And one is what we we'll call them arithmetic pipeline to improve or uh, do a speed up the computations. So these are two things are there. Let me just give you, um, this is a separate topic altogether. We don't want to spend too much time here for the purpose is more on the microprocessor side. But let me just explain you what exactly we mean by the, uh, by mean by the arithmetic pipeline example. Let's say for example, I want to execute for i equals 1 to 1000, might be many more. Uh, this one looping I want to do, do. I want to say do a i plus b i multiplied by c i. This is basically arithmetic operations I want to do. So I have 1000 data from 1 to 1000. I want to add a i, a and b i and then multiply with c i. So uh, while one set of data is being executed, another set of data might be uploaded and so on. So this is called, so let me just design the pipelining. So this is my one register called R1. The second register is R2. This register where I am loading the AI. First, that could be thousands of data. Then I am loading the second, uh, the BI is here. So I am loading into R1, AI, and BI I am loading into the R2. Then the first stage, I am loading the first data of AI and first data of BI. The second stage, I will be doing operations. I will add these two. So first stage, they will be uploaded. Second stage, they will be added. While the second stage addition is taking place, in the first stage, next set of data will be there. So let's say A1, A2 is the first set of data, will be loaded in the first stage. In the second stage, A1 and B1 will be load, will be added while in the first stage A2 and B2 will be loaded and so on. Now after this result is being stored into some register, let's say R, R3 and again, so this third stage might be, or let's say second, so this is my first stage, this is my second stage, it will be loaded, it will be executed and let's say loaded into the R3. The third stage will be for where the multiplication is taking place. So this data is coming here. So this is my CI. So now what I am trying to do is, in fact directly I cannot do, I can just put in into R4 here. Now look at now, uh, this is my pipeline and finally some result is let us say R5. Now what is the pipeline, what, what achievement I have made? The, the time taken to additions will take same time even if without the, if you, even if you do not use the pipelining now. So in non-pipelining or in pipelining time taken to addition, do addition or do multiplication will be same as if you do not support the pipelining. But the advantage with the pipelining is that several stages, all these stages, the operations are taking place simultaneously. Here multiplication is taking place, here addition is taking place, here data is getting uploaded and so on and so forth. So various stages of the pipeline we are trying to support them. So overall uh, the computations will improve now. So this is what we call them arithmetic pipelining where we are trying to improve or the speed up the arithmetic operations. I can also before you do executions, arithmetic operations you apply, you have to load the instruction, decode the instructions, data and so on. So basically, let me design the instructions pipelining. Similarly, I can design instructions pipelining. So any instructions pipelining contains, these are the operation, fetch instructions. I will fetch from the memory. I will decode instructions, calculate the effective address where they are stored, where the data is stored. Then I will fetch the operand. FO and finally I will execute the. So similarly, I can I can form a, a instructions pipelining. So design the instructions pipelining again. I will have a multiple stages where one will be executing, second will be uh, decoding it, fetching the operand. Third stage, one stage might be decoding the uh, address. 
the first stage might so here the, I can form one two three four the stages the first stage will be working with the fetching instructions second will be working with decoding instructions so while decoding while it is decoding the first instruction the next instructions will be fetched into the first stage while the third stage we will be fetching the operand this will be working with the previous data and this will be working with the previous data and so on so forth so basically I am doing like this fetch instructions again there is a buffer to go into the uh, into the uh, next stage it will go into the DA stage this will be stored into particular registers this will go into the FO stage this will be stored again the result will be stored into some registers and finally it will go to the execution stage and finally the result will be stored somewhere else. So it means that the time taken at each stage will be same even if you don't uh, uh, support the pipelining. But advantage with pipelining that several stages of operations are taking place simultaneously. So overall improvement to have in the operations now. So this is what you have the basic concepts of what exactly the pipelining is what exactly you have the super pipelining structures and so on. Now with, with this one let me just uh, just come back to the uh, um, some P6 some more focus I will be what exactly P6 I just listed few operations few basic design trends of P6 that is they support super pipelining architecture they have a super scalar architecture they have uh, multiple functional units they have and so on. The another advantage which you see in the um, in the uh, what we call them new microprocessor is the what we call them and this is also uh, applicable to P6 is what we call them two chips in one package. Two chips in one package. Now the uh, the what exactly have uh, this is very fascinating and very exciting um, uh, contributions in this one now that the the both the CPU as well as some memory are in the same package itself. Uh, they have what we call them one die. The one is what we call them CPU die. Is one core uh, including two KB. So CPU contains in one core or one chip you can say. Uh, and uh, here is the uh, the second is the 8 KB memory 8 KB cache one place the another place what we call them we have a secondary memory and so on so basically in that one place itself you have it uh, this is a basic advantage that both the secondary memory and CPU are in the one package itself and in between so in between we have very high speed bus they call the what we call them there is a uh, 64 bit bus so that the data uh, from if data is missed or data is not found in the primary cache it can immediately taken up from the secondary cache this is called L2 cache or this is called L1 so the one what exactly the meaning of two chips in one package we have uh, in one package we have one component as a CPU plus L1 means cache which is used for primary cache we can call them which, which is used with CPU the in the second uh, the second component of the package is the the L2 where the secondary memory is there advantage with these two chips in one package is the flexibility and the speed which CPU can retrieve the data if data is not fine into the L1 it can easily find from the L2 the most of the chips which we have in the memory uh, in here is what we call them is this SRAM chips not DRAM chips. So there are two types of memory you have uh, called um, SRAM chips and DRAM chips. DRAM chips, uh, SRAM chips are much more faster. Uh, they don't they don't require refreshment as we have in the DRAM chip uh, uh, because uh, SRAM chips have more transistors than this one. In the DRAM they require one transistor uh, 
to uh, store one bit of data whereas in SRAM you require more transistors to uh, store the data but as a result uh, SRAM becomes faster and more expensive than DRAM but it does not uh, does not require what we call them refre uh, refreshing quite this one now uh, the 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 another important component of the P6 is what we call them the bus design. So there are two type of bus designs are there. Let me just very quickly, uh, I will just plot, uh, I think we have some time, five minutes, just basic times which we have, I mean, just draw the basic configuration of a P6, just partly I will just try to do. Uh, what we, I explain to you right now is what we call them L2 cache is here. This is basic block diagram of this one, L2 cache. Then this is a main memory. Uh, I have not shown CPU. CPU somewhere is here itself. There are two types of buses are there. There are two types of buses there. One what we call them the backside bus, and the second is called the uh, the front side bus. So front side bus, and this is called what we call them the backside bus. So L2 is connected with backside bus with CPU core. So now we have a bus interface unit, bus interface unit uh, and again bus interface unit. So basically two buses I am showing you here, one is called backside bus and the, and the second is called the front side bus now. And now, now what advantage you have is uh, the, the advantage which we have this type of buses and that the P6 has very dedicated bus. Uh, for the secondary case uh, and uh, it's a two advantage you have which earlier didn't have earlier Pentium version of the microprocessor didn't have the two uh, the two if advantage you have one is that basically the uh, the CPU does not require any blocking operations and they can work with the cache uh, faster and there will no contentions with IO operations for IO to handle with IO if data has to be put into memory or data has to be put from some other places it, the different buses is used earlier there was a common bus which we use for all the purpose now now p6 have a different bus which is used only for the l2 and the cpu core whereas for other operations they use the front side bus which is used for other io operations so there is no conflict between the two and the 64 bit bus is there because the CPU is also 64 bit. So all are basically, um, the CPU is primarily 32 bit but the bus they have supported 64 bit now. So this way one, one has to, uh, one basic advantage you have. Another in advantage of this microprocessor is that right now, you know, the two types of microprocessor architecture we have with study, one is called the disk risk type of machine and the sys type of machine so what they do they have not replaced this sysc so what what they have done is that the they have a very uh, what we call them uh, they have sub, uh, they have a design instructions decoder so after this one bus interface unit it goes into the instruction cache instruction cache and so on now instruction cache it might be of the uh, uh, which what we call them sysc type of very lengthy type of instruction. They work with the sysc type of architecture, but they support instructions decoder. So what they do, all the complex instructions, sysc type of complex instructions are decoded and made them into very simpler type of instruction, what we we'll call them a risk type of this one. So what, so what I am trying to show you that this is a bus interface unit, goes into the instruction cache, uh, then they have a instructions decoder here. I will call them ID and these instructions decoder produce very simple type of operations, very simple type of microprocessor which is very similar to the uh, what we we'll call them a, a is uh, what we we'll call them as a uh, CISC type or RISC type of architecture. So this is where they try to uh, try to um, uh, address various problem which we come across into the microprocessor design. Very quickly uh, what basically what we have tried to address so far 
is the this is a part of this P6 block diagram. I have not shown you the key bus interface goes into the data cache and so on, something like this. And then there are multiple functional units are there. There is a um, uh, there is a um, registers bank, just like in the risk type of architectures they have. But most important thing which we have to try to focus today is okay, most of these microprocessors today are basically following the pipelining type of architecture. They are supporting multiple functional units. They are supporting um, uh, several chips into one package, or what we call them dual package, uh, dual core sometimes they call it. Um, they are increasing the size of a bus bandwidth. The, uh, the uh, beside the multiple functional units, they have a floating point operations and so on. Finally, what we try to address is that design of the microprocessor or the process is almost same, but one has to address something related to the process CPU, to the IC design, power issues and something like this and so on. Also, we explain to what exactly the pipelining concept is, how to design instructions pipelining, how to design a arithmetic pipelining. Super scalar, you have understood what exactly it is that is showing more instructions per cycle. This is all. Thank you very much.